What's up guys? So the latest round of DLC, the base forms of Vegeta and Goku have been out for about a week. So I thought what I would do is a little bit of a head-to-head, -head, Vegeta versus Goku. Which one is stronger? Which one is a better use of your money? If you're not the kind of person that buys the season pass, if you're just thinking about buying the characters individually, which one between the two do I think that you should pick up? So, uh, we'll start out talking about Vegeta. Let's talk about the pros and cons here. So pros, right off the bat, I think uh, his damage is probably his biggest advantage. He's got these loops that you've probably seen. They're pretty easy in the corner. Uh, you can get a ton of meterless damage. I believe he's pretty much the highest meterless damage character in the game right now. See, like that. Easily 50% meterless, and you can go into level 3. Uh, this is another big plus of his, is that his level 3 is extremely good. You get a really ambiguous cross-up in the corner. You get whatever kind of safe jump setup you want after his level 3. Uh, his mix-ups are also really, really good. Once base Vegeta gets in on you, he becomes very hard to block. Because he has stuff like uh, this kick, where he can go into overhead or low. Uh, he's got a command throw that, guess what, he can go into loops off of this. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, he's got this overhead attack, which it is semi-reactable, but it is a tough reaction. And guess what? You can get loops off of this, too. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, so good damage, good mix-ups, hard to block. He's even got this little cross-up move. Get damage off that. Guess what? More loops. Uh, so yeah, um, he does have some flaws, though. The damage and the mix-ups, that's what's really carrying this character. But he does have some issues as well. I think primarily... Uh, he doesn't really have that good of projectiles, so he's got this Destructo Disc. He can only do it on the ground, can't do it in the air. In the air, he just has these single key blasts. So this disc does have some nice uses, obviously. Uh, you can see if I hold down, it goes full screen. If I hold up, it goes up at this angle, so that can be good for catching super dashes. But generally, this move is not that useful for controlling screen space, because it is very easy for the opponent to get around this with a super dash. It doesn't really cover the angles that you want for a projectile usually. It's pretty easy to get around uh, as compared to something like Super Saiyan Vegeta. You know, he's got the Key Blast, key blast Barrage. Uh, this is actually a really, really good move for controlling space. You can catch the opponent trying to do Kamehamehas. And if it hits, you can go into a Vanish, into a combo. Uh, base form Vegeta doesn't really have this luxury. Uh... His projectiles just aren't that good. So that, I would say, is his biggest flaw. He's got the usual Vegeta problem of kind of stubby limbs. But I wouldn't say it's that big of a deal. Like, because usually you're going to be putting him first on your team. Because his assist isn't that great. Speaking of which, that's another one of his flaws. His assist is, like, okay. Uh, you can use it for some uh, combo extensions like that. Uh, but generally, this is not, like... A super desirable assist compared to something like, uh, obviously, Super Saiyan Vegeta's assist is ridiculous. But yeah, you can't get stuff like that. But anyway, because his assist is kind of so-so, and because he does build so much meter and do so much damage, you're generally going to be putting him first. Um, so because of that, you're able to use uh, assists so effectively to get in on the opponent, to start mixing them up. To get his whole high-low throw game started. Um, so I would say his lacking neutral because of the lack of projectiles and because his normals are a little bit stubby. It can be an issue, but overall I would say it's not too bad because you are going to be able to take advantage of the good assist that you pair with this character to get in more easily. And to start his ridiculously good mix-up game. And then obviously whenever you get that hit, guess what time it is? It's loop time. Uh, there are some people who think that the loops will be nerfed. I'm kind of included. I would not be surprised if they remove these loops. Uh, because they are a little bit too easy for the amount of damage that you get. Really, no other character is able to do this. Now that they've nerfed Cell's damage, Vegeta's pretty much the top in the game when it comes to meterless corner damage. Uh, but then again, they might not loop them. And even without them, I still think he's a very strong character. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that you can even do the loops uh, mid-screen. 
Uh, it's a little bit harder, uh, but it's ridiculously strong if you're able to do it. See, there you go. You can even take them all the way from corner to corner. And he does have this air super, which uh, you don't want to sleep on the fact that he has an air super. That is pretty nice for those situations, you know, where uh, you get kind of the stray hit or whatever and you're not able to go straight into a launcher. Being able to end your combo with an air super is kind of nice. And as I'll get to shortly, that is a luxury that base Goku does not have. He has no air supers, uh, which is one of his weaknesses. But... So finishing up talking about base Vegeta, I think in terms of how strong he is, I think he's ridiculously strong. I think he might be top 5 in the game. Uh, so he's very, very uh, powerful. But in terms of how interesting he is, I don't know. That's when it kind of becomes up to you. Like personally, I am not a fan of the fact that so many of his normals are reused animations from the existing Vegeta characters. Like same crouching light, same crouching medium. Uh, same jumping heavy like so much is reused plus they've all got you know this kick attack as one of their special moves it's a little bit boring to me how much of this is similar across the different Vegeta characters uh, and a lot of shared strategies too like there a lot of them are doing this strategy where you force them to block a, a kick special and then you can go in for the overheads afterwards so he's a little bit too similar to the other Vegetas for me you might not have this problem, but to me it's kind of an issue how much is shared between the characters. So, even though he is really powerful, it's up to you whether you think he's really interesting or not. He is fun to play, uh, but yeah, he's not the most unique character on the roster by a long shot. But with that out of the way, let's talk about base form Goku. So, base form Goku, on the other hand, is actually really, really different from the other Gokus. His moves are really differentiated in terms of like his auto combo is really unique and this move actually comes in handy a lot uh, he's got this shoulder charge which is kind of similar to Goku blue but it's got a lot of different uses like you can use it for uh, frame trap purposes like you can catch the opponent uh, sticking out a button here go into a combo that's pretty cool he also has a really sick command throw and there you can get the combo off of that. So his mix-ups are really, really good. Uh, but he does have this issue, like I was alluding to when I said he doesn't have an air super. A big problem is, if you're getting kind of a stray hit, something like, I don't know, Kamehameha into Vanish, say. There's no way for him to go into super in this situation. He doesn't have an air super. He doesn't have a way to get a sliding knockdown. So, really, this is all you can do. Your only other option would be just going straight into super. Something like this. Which, I mean, it's fine, but it's not a lot of damage. And you're not building very much meter because you're not doing a combo. Of course, you can charge up his spirit bomb. Which is something worth talking about. The spirit bomb is very cool. I would say it's one of the most interesting things about his characters. He's got this risk reward where... Okay, maybe you give up like a knockdown situation to give yourself a chance to charge the level 3 spirit bomb. And you can use that to land the spirit bomb super. That is really cool. Uh, I just don't think it's that powerful. The reason being that level 3 spirit bomb is really, really hard to get in a match. Obviously, you can do something where like, you know, you do a combo. Uh, maybe call an assist, start charging. Uh, but is it really worth giving up your knockdown situation completely? Like, you're completely sacrificing the ability to pressure the opponent in order to get that level 3 charge. But I think most of the time, it's better to just keep applying pressure, use that knockdown as a chance to go for a mix-up, and maybe get another hit. I don't know if that's always going to be the case, but to me, it's just never that good to completely give up your knockdown. Because your knockdown is where your mix-ups are going to come from, usually. Uh, and the damage that you do get off of level 3 into Spirit Bomb is really nice. But in these situations I was talking about where, like, say you get, like, a command throw, right? Uh, and we have level 3 charged. So say you get the command throw. And we're going to go into Spirit Bomb. And it doesn't actually do that much damage. So... 
Oh, less than 40% for 3 meters, plus you used up your level 3 charge, which is really, really hard to get. You're not going to get very many of these in a real match. Um, as opposed to, you know, Super Saiyan Vegeta, like I was saying, you know, if he gets a stray hit... You know, he's getting up to 30-40% for 1 meter. You know what I'm saying? See, so base Vegeta, we got 45% for 1 meter off of a stray hit. And you know, you can do this off of his projectile as well. It, that That's just not something that base Goku is able to do. Now, base Goku, he can get good damage with a launcher. Uh, that's definitely true. Because, you know, in this situation, you get the sliding knockdown. You can go into the uh, super afterwards. You know, he does get good damage in those situations. But the thing is, the way that his kit is designed, he's not going to be getting those that often. He doesn't have a low hitting down light. Which means that mix-ups with his normals are not going to be that effective. Most of his mix-ups come from, like, command throws, which you can't get a launcher off this. It's not possible. Or off of, like, this uh, sort of frame trap move. Stuff like that. So, uh, it's, it's not as easy for him to get launchers as it looks. So, I think that that, to me, is the biggest issue with the character is that it's just a little bit too hard to get good damage because either you have to give up some of your pressure by going for the level 3 charge to get the spirit bomb uh, or you have to pretty much resign yourself to the fact that all your combos are gonna do like pretty small damage because you're not able to get the launcher so uh, but that's not to say he doesn't have some pretty big benefits as well one of the best things about uh, Super Saiyan Goku is his Kaioken Super uh, this thing is actually pretty crazy, especially uh, when your other characters die. Uh, you know, once you get up to, like, Kaioken times 20, it can become a little bit crazy in terms of, like, the mix-ups that you're able to do to the opponent. You know, you can go for command throws and whatever, combo off it, into really good damage. So if you do put him in the second or third slot, Take that opportunity to build a lot of meter. He can make a lot happen with the Kaiokens. Similarly, the Spirit Bomb is actually pretty decent for punishing. So, like, if you're jumping around, a lot of times uh, people like to super dash at you when you're in the air. You know, because of the fact that you can't down heavy when you're in the air, this is a good way to uh, hit an opponent who likes to jump back. But this isn't really something that you can do against base form Goku, because as soon as he sees this Spirit Dash, he can go straight into the Spirit Bomb, and holy cow, you get so much damage when it hits raw, 60%. So he does have that big threat there of the Spirit Bomb. It does make him like a very uh, damaging character in the sense that when the opponent isn't expecting it, you can really get the big punishes. Or like uh, if the opponent decides to be cheesy and maybe throw out a uh, Wake Up Level 3 or something, Like, if the opponent does level 3 on Wake Up, you can go into your own Spirit Bomb to punish it, and you are just going to do so much damage to them. So definitely, the threat of the Spirit Bomb is not to be underestimated. Although, like I said, it does have that big issue of comboing into it is very difficult. But, I mean, there are easier ways to combo into it. Like, uh, you can use some supers to Z-change into it. For example, Yamcha Super. You know, you can use this to set up the Spirit Bomb uh, to end a combo with it. And I mean, that's good damage. It's 63%, right? But is it really worth building your entire team, limiting the characters you can pick uh, in order to get uh, this level 3 combo? Because I mean, it's really not that much more damage than uh, you get with just a normal level 3. Like, let's, let's look at just going straight into base Vegeta level 3. You know, 5,700, we're, we're about seven 800 damage short, but then we don't have the whole restriction of, like, you have to pick a character who...
who is able to Z-change into Goku's level 3. Like, there's only a handful of characters in the game that can do that, and you're limiting your team composition and your other synergies by focusing so much around landing that Spirit Bomb. But, anyway, that being said, I know it probably sounds like I'm a little bit down on base Goku, but I do think he's not that bad of a character. I think he's pretty decent, and like I said, he does have the huge threat between his Kaioken and his level 3 Spirit Bomb as a punishment tool. Uh, he does get really crazy with a lot of meter, uh, and I do think that he's really fun to play. He's a very unique character design. Most characters, their level 3s are just plain old combo enders. That's what you do. You land a combo, you go into their level 3, you get a mix-up afterwards. But his is very unique and different. Most characters don't have something this interesting. And I do like that it presents a team building challenge where you actually have to think about what characters you're putting on your team because you want characters that give you assists that let you charge this up easier or give you Z changes that let you go into his level 3. So I think it's really cool and I think he's a very interesting character and he's sufficiently differentiated from the other Gokus which I don't really think is the case for Vegeta. So this video is getting a little bit long and rambly so I guess I'll just give my final thoughts here. Vegeta I think is a top tier character. I think if your goal is to build the strongest team possible and just dominate people as best as you can online base Vegeta is the way to go. But if you don't care as much about that, if you care more about a unique character who's different from everyone else that's in the cast already, that will uh, kind of force you to think differently about your team construction and gives you some neat tactics that aren't available for most of the cast, then I would say go with base Goku if he seems more interesting to you. I think base Goku is probably a mid-tier character, maybe lower mid, um, so he's definitely not as good, but he is definitely viable and he can really get things going like crazy once you get all this meter and you can start using it for Kaiokens and the level 3 Spirit Bomb. So I think he's a cool character, even if he's not as broken as base Vegeta. So those are my thoughts, guys. I hope you found this video informative and that it helps you make some purchase decisions for which DLC characters you want to play. There's going to be two links on screen here to more videos like this one. Make sure you check those out, as well as a link to become a subscriber if you're not already, and a link to help support me on Patreon. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.